Hey guys, I am back again to show you another video in this series of the base shakers. I want to show you how to hook up a base shaker and what it takes. There's a to hook up the base shaker itself. There's actually one really simple thing that you have to do. See these four screw holes right here. You're going to screw a screw up in each one of those corners. Each one of those corners does need something in contact with, and it should be even. So it should be a flat thing. So for example, if this was uh, wood, you you would want to connect it, see how this is all flat? You would want to screw it into it flat, like so. And so let me flip that over and show you kind of what that would look like. So if that was wood, you'd want to connect it to that. You do not want to connect it with any padding or anything else underneath. You want it to be directly in contact with whatever the surface is, which is typically wood that a couch is made out of. Now, if, for example, you don't have a solid piece of wood under there to connect to, then you may have to get a piece of wood piece of board or something in order to connect it across your couch uh, to to make it a big enough surface for this to mount to. Now for whatever reason um, you can't figure that out I have another video that's going to show me actually hooking this up and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about about how you might need to use another um, board. I've already done that on one of my couches and I will show you what that looks like. Now let's talk about power requirements. This particular uh, base shaker takes 50 watts of continuous power, RMS power. Now you are going to want to feed it all 50 watts of continuous power. That's how you're going to get your best results with this. Now you can use two different types of amplifiers for that. You can use a subwoofer plate amplifier, which is what most people do, because with the subwoofer plate amplifier you can adjust the volume up and down and you can adjust the cutoff frequency so therefore you don't need to worry about actually having a, a low pass or something set up so it actually has a dial on it where you can turn it down to 80 hertz and set it at that and then you can turn the volume frequency up and down until you get the desired response that you want with this particular base shaker now that's one way to hook it up Another way to hook it up, now this is 4 ohm stable, and this is 4 ohm, uh, this is a 4 ohm puck, is to get something like this. Now this is a Sure board amp. Now this board amp is rated at 50 watts per, per channel max. Um, no more than that. And so you can use something like this, which would give it the pure 50 watts per channel per woofers per one of these so you'd plug up the red and black into one channel of this to get it 50 watts of power however in order to get it 50 watts of power you need to actually hook up a power supply now you can plug up something like this although like this particular one is only a 12 volt 6 amp which means that's only 48 watts of power total so each speaker is only going to get 24 watts of sound because you need to split those in half so that's not going to be big enough now you can get bigger ones of these power supplies are founded in um like for laptops and stuff you can pick them up usually for under 10 15 bucks that's one way to do it i don't recommend that but you can do it i have a 19 volt almost 4.75 amp on it right now and it works fine but i can tell i'm not getting all the power and that's why I'm switching over to this. Now this is actually the uh, the power supply that's recommended for this particular, I'm sorry, for this particular amplifier. And this particular one is the RS100-24 by Meanwell. Now this is a 108 watt power supply. It does have voltage regulation and we will regulate that down to about 22 volts to get the desired 100 watts that we're, we're shooting for for this board. That will give us the top power for this. So always try to get the top power. Pay attention because when you're amplify when you buy an amplifier, it will tell you what the top power is rated at 4 ohms. Assuming that you're only going to hook up one puck to each side, you need to make sure that the 50 watts is for at 4 ohms and not at 2 ohms or 8 ohms because you'll, you'll damage your speaker or you're not going to get the desired response that you really want. Alright, so now let's talk about if you do it this way, which is the way that I'm going to do it, 
let me talk about how you actually hook it up because it's very simple and most of you probably have all the tools you already need at the house. First thing that you're going to want to do is hook up the amplifier to power. So in this particular case, with the mean well, we're going to hook up this mean well power supply to this. Now I will have a video showing you exactly how to do that, so don't worry about that right yet. So you'll hook up this power to this. And this will be off to the side. And then once you do that, you're going to hook up the red and white, which this is actually spring-loaded, and you just push it, and then you put the speaker wire in, and then you release it, and it clamps down on the speaker wire. And you're going to hook it up to one of these channels. So in this particular case, we'll just say that we're going to hook it up into out one right here on the right. You notice there's a positive and a negative on it. So we'd hook the positive up to the red, the negative up to the black. And then we're almost done. There's only one other thing that we need to do to hook it up. And you notice there's an RCA input on either side. Now each one is for each side of the board. So this RCA input is for this side of the board and this RCA input is for this side of the board. Now in order to hook this up to the amplifier, you're gonna run an RCA cable, which will have a male end on both sides. So if you notice this RCA cable, for example, has a male on both sides. Um, and if you have, this is a monster cable. If, if you have, you can do a subwoofer, subwoofer cable. Not necessary though, if you want to, you can do it. You plug one side into line in, which is the side that we plugged in the base shaker to. And the other side will plug into your subwoofer out on your receiver. Now your receiver has a specific RCA labeled subwoofer out. The reason why you have to plug it into that RCA is for a reason. Now it does have to say subwoofer out. Because once you plug this into your subwoofer out, you will then have the ability to determine what frequency range to cut this off at. So you'll have to go into your amplifier and set it at 80 hertz frequency cutoff. Now that's easy to do, anyone can do it. Your manual will tell you how to do it, um, but it, it, it's very simple to do. Now that this is one of the easiest and cheapest ways to do it. Some of our amplifiers are actually pretty expensive, determining, especially if you wanna run multiple of these. So I found this to be one of the easier, cheaper ways to do it. Because if you wanna run, you can run two base pucks off of here, or two, I'm sorry, base shakers, full power off that, and all you would need to do, you can still run the same cable, and what you'd do is you'd split the signal with one of these splitters, and you would just plug this end in, like you would typically, but instead of plugging it into the amplifier, you plug it into the splitter, and now the splitter plugs into these. Now, if, for example, two is not enough, you can split it as many times as you need to, four or five, until you lose signal, of course. If you get too much of signal loss, then you can no longer do that. So let's have an example that we want to hook up both of these two board amps right here. And we have two of these power supplies, because you're going to need one for each one, right? Because each one's rated at 100 watts. 100 watts for this one, 100 watts for this one. Each puck is rated at 50 watts. 50, 50 equals 100, 50, 50 equals 100. So 100 watt power supply for each one, right? And then we are going to plug up each puck into its individual side. Each one is at four ohms. This is 100 watts at four ohms. And so the next puck would then get plugged into this side. The next puck would get this side, the next puck. So that's four pucks being plugged in, all being powered at 50 watts or for a total of 200 watts. We will not be using that type of power supply at all. Then what we would do is we would split the cable. So the cable is going out of the receiver, out of the subwoofer out, like we said, and we're gonna run it into the first splitter. Now that first splitter would only hook up one of these, so we need more than that. So we're gonna run it into another two splitters. And now we have four outputs. Each one of these outputs will plug in to each one of the RCAs on each one of the amplifiers. So therefore, we have both of these now hooked up, now all receiving the same audio signal, which is all the RCA does. The RCA just sends a signal and tells this what to play, 
to each one of the pumps. Now you can safely have four of these hooked up to any materials. So you can have four different couches hooked up or you can do two per couch and just have two couches hooked up. Or like for me, I'm doing one for a love seat and three for a, a standard couch or that may end up becoming two and two. It depends on what the feel is when I get done with it. I'm gonna test it a couple different times. Now, if you're interested to see how we hook it up, keep an eye out because we're gonna go ahead and stick some videos up on how we actually hook these up to the couch. Thanks guys. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please like, and I will have more videos up for you.